Houston Texans are signing former Dallas Cowboys tight end Dalton Schultz to a one-year deal worth up to $9 million bucks per multiple reports. He had 198 catches and 17 touchdowns over the past three seasons with the boys. Schultz will take over as the Texans' starting tight end after they lost Jordan Aikens and O.J. Howard to free agency. And the Texans agreed to a one-year deal worth up to $3.75 million with former Bills running back Devin Singletary. The last two games have certainly been a roller coaster ride for the Spurs on Friday. They led the Grizzlies by 29 points in the third, and they lost 126 to 120 in overtime. Yesterday, they trailed the Hawks by 24 in the third, and they won 126 to 118. Devin Vassell and Kelvin Johnson led the way, scoring 29 points apiece. Now, that was Vassell's best output since returning from knee surgery, as he made 12 of 17 field goal attempts. Devin knocking down shots, gets KJ all kinds of fired up. To see, you know, him hitting shots and, and getting a step back, if you're not smiling, something wrong with you at the end of the day. And that's, that's just a point blank period. So, like, when, when I seen him hitting shots from the first shot, like, I was just, like, instantly wide open live. Like, man, it, I couldn't do nothing but smile, be hyped, scream. Like, this is probably the most I didn't scream in a long time tonight. And I wouldn't want to do it with, with no other person than Devin. Spurs will now take their show on the road and play at the Pelicans tomorrow night at 7. In women's college basketball, 7 seed Baylor will play number 2 UConn in the second round of the NCAA tournament tonight. UConn won its opener easily defeating Vermont 95-52, while Baylor edged out Alabama 78-74. And the big story from that one, Baylor trailed 22-4 after one, then fought back to advance. I would kind of just start off with, yeah, there's a high, but at the same time we have a lot to learn from that game, obviously, first quarter specifically. But, yeah, I think as we keep the high, but at the same time, it's on to the next. You don't want to think about the past, and you don't want to get too low. You go in with a positive mindset, and I think that's what we've done. I think it's carried into today, but at the same time, refocus again. Baylor and UConn will play tonight at 8 in Stores, Connecticut. In more March Madness, 5C Louisville is playing basketball with 4C Texas right now, and Louisville leads 14 to 12 in the first quarter. We'll have highlights for you on the night beat. UTSA baseball swept a three-game series with Conference USA foe Florida Atlantic this weekend to push their winning streak to 10 straight games, their second longest in school history. They're now 18-3 overall and 3-0 in conference play. Last season, the Roadrunners advanced to the Conference USA championship game, and they lost, missing out on the automatic bid to make the NCAA tournament. So they were hoping to get an at-large bid, but they didn't, missing out on the field of 64. So is that something this year's team is thinking about? We got a few new guys this year. A lot of our a lot of our top contributors weren't on the team last year, but a lot of us were. And so those of us that have been here since last year definitely remember that feeling of of not quite making it right there at the end when a lot of us feel like we should have. And so especially early in the year, we're definitely keeping that in mind and understanding, hey, it's a long season and and hopefully there's a lot more to come. Josie. UTSA will play at UT RGV tomorrow night at 630. And congrats to UTSA junior Caleb Hill, who won CSU CUSA Hitter of the Week honors after hitting 615 in four games last week. Go Roadrunners. Mm -hmm. Yes. Beat the Gauchos. Birds up. That's UT RGV. I know. Gauchos. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. All right, still to come here, where did some <laughs> South Texas towns get their names? You have got to hear some of these stories. Justin Horn takes us on a road trip in Case That Explains. Up next. Everything has a name, and sometimes that name has a story behind it. You know, South Texas has no shortage of history to pass along. That's why meteorologist Justin Horn has traveled hundreds of miles over the year to find out over the years to find out how did that town get that name. In this case, that explains Justin looks at the towns he's visited and he answers that age old question. What's in a name? Asking if South Texas is interesting is like asking if the cedar tree is allergy inducing. Of course it is. And so interesting the fact that they've made movies about it. Hollywood thought it was perfect too. Filming the movie Seven Days in Utopia here starring Robert Duvall. 
and borrowed intersecting streets for hit songs. This town is home to the corner of First and Amistad. It doesn't look like much, but it's the only intersection in the country with that name. And if it sounds familiar, there's a good reason for that. Yes, it's the intersection made famous in the 2009 song, You Found Me by the Fray. That was in Kemato, where the origins of the town, which translates to burned or scorched, isn't quite certain. But there are multiple theories. It was uh, because the Spaniards thought it was a uh, remains of, of an old volcano. And it wasn't the first time we ran into some name origin tales that caught us off guard. And they came up with uh, the name Walfart. Yes, Walfart. It's a German name that received more than a few laughs. It was a bird that kept flying around that kept saying something like, ki hee ki hee ki -hee. Rumor is from all the locals that it did get its name from a card game called Coon Can. Not the heinous. A common mistake, but wrong. And remember, there's no anus in Dehennis. I never messed that one up again, out of respect for the fine folks of Dehennis, which if you were curious, was founded by the famed Henry Castro and originally named Dehani. As we often do, we put our Texas spin on it. But it turns out it wasn't the only town in the area that's been mispronounced. The ones that we usually hear are, are Jordanton. Or as it was today with an out-of-town caller. Jordan Town. Which is wrong. Which is totally wrong. What do you think about green? Green? <laughs> I think it's very green and beautiful. And they just went, oh, Maiko. And for the record? No, it is not Miko. It's Von Army, it's pronounced with an A. Born, Bernays. Bjorn, Burn. They always say Born. We tell people weekend at Bernie's or Bernie. That's that's how you pronounce it. I think we can all agree that the odd vowel structure of the German language can be a bit challenging. But as it turns out, the German settlers to the area were also good at understanding irony. They called it Camp Comfort, thinking it was going to get easier and better, and it didn't. And so they named it, they dropped the word camp, and they went to comfort because there wasn't any. Ironic indeed. And while we're on the topic of literary devices, it turns out that back in the 1800s, spelling was a bit of an issue for some of our local county and state officials. Back in the old days, not everybody could read or write or spell. Leaving us with what we see today. It wound up being Dimit, D-I-M-M-I-T. They dropped the second T. But when the paperwork came back, it officially declared the town as Divot. So Pivot had to pivot and stick with Divot. Post office dropped the E and added an A. Yes, Natalia should have been Natalie. Natalie was the daughter of famed engineer, Dr. Frederick Pearson, who was the designer and financer of Medina Dam. In a tragic twist, he died along with his wife in the sinking of the Lusitania, an event that propelled the United States into World War I. And if you thought the connection to presidents and world events ended there, you'd be wrong. In fact, many area communities have had some direct ties to presidents. Some pretty recognizable names have lived in Catula through the years, including a U.S. president who was a teacher here at the Wellhausen Elementary School, which is now the LaSalle County Appraisal District. That president was Lyndon B. Johnson. One of the early landowners in this area was Charles Taft, the 27th president William Howard Taft's half-brother. He would build the famous Taft Summer House, and as the legend goes, complete with oversized bathtubs for his portly brother. A house that was later moved and used by former Texas Governor Dolph Frisco. Another big name, one of many we discovered along our journeys. And Poteet has another claim to fame. It is the birthplace of George Strait. He was born here at this hospital, which has long since shut down. Jeff Bezos's grandparents also owned a ranch near Catula. Meet Count Norbert von Army, an Austro-Hungarian nobleman who came into money and grew tired of Europe. And Frio Town's jail too still stands. The second four cells holding some famous outlaws. My understanding is uh, Jesse James and, and Frank James spent the night there. It's a former military installment with a rich history. Charles Lindbergh even landed here. For its size, Uvalde boasts an impressive list of hometown celebrities. Of course, you have Matthew McConaughey. Legend had it, it was actually John Wilkes Booth had survived 
and was able to escape after assassinating President Lincoln and settled here in Bandera. We can't confirm that, but if you dove to the bottom of Canyon Lake, you probably find evidence of Hancock and Crane's Mill, both towns that have disappeared from the map. That was also the fate of Polly, a town named after famed Tejano, Jose Policarpio Rodriguez. And you compare him to the guy from Tennessee who, kind of, who killed 10 bears. Well, he killed almost that many on this first trip to the valley here. And over the years, the stories kept coming. St. Hedwig is the patron saint of Silesia. It's hard to imagine that in the early 1900s, this small town was known as the Saratoga of the South, a nod to Saratoga, New York, because of all things, the spa industry. No, there's no mythical monster amongst the trees. Rather, the town's namesake is this colorful character, William Bigfoot Wallace. Pana Maria after the Virgin Mary. Pana Maria in Polish means young girl. And so he said, Montana is just not the name for this place. I'm going to name it after Sir Thomas More's Utopia, the perfect place to be. A perfect name. And ask any resident from any of these towns, and they'll tell you they live in the perfect place with a name that generates plenty of pride and provides for some interesting history. For KSAT Explains, I'm Justin Horn. And now you know the stories or a lot of them. Yeah. You can watch any case that explains story on demand by scanning this QR code. You can also find explains on the case YouTube channel. You know, I think wall fart may be my favorite. I think it's, it's got a certain, favorite. It's got yeah. a certain ring to it. Two out of the three in the studio <laughs> seem to approve. Too bad it was changed. We'll be right back. Okay. The latest on the banking crisis now, the FDIC says New York Community Bank agreed to buy a portion of the failed signature bank for almost $3 billion in an effort to avoid destabilizing the global banking system. 40 branches of Signature Bank will be renamed to Flag Star Bank, a purchase of more than $38 billion in signatures assets, also part of the deal. Bloomberg reports that Warren Buffett is actually actually in talks with the White House to invest in regional banks like Signature. Now overseas in Switzerland, regulators brokered a deal for investment bank UBS to buy the smaller Credit Suisse for three billion dollars. This was a shotgun uh, wedding um, with the objective to secure uh, financial system stability. Financial experts and Swiss regulators agree the move will likely prevent wider financial chaos. Federal and local authorities on alert after calls from former President Trump for his supporters to take to the streets in protest if he's indicted. Trump claiming without evidence that he will be arrested tomorrow. Trump's claims are in connection with the Manhattan District Attorney's criminal investigation into alleged hush money payments that were made to an adult film actress shortly before the 2016 election. Today, top House Republicans sending a letter to Manhattan's DA demanding his office turnover testimony and evidence related to their investigation and potential indictment of Trump. Take a like, look outside right now, 55 degrees. We've been saying it feels like a Monday, but wait, change is on the way. Yeah, you know, it was rather cool the past several days, all weekend long, and things are changing. It's going to feel more spring-like starting tomorrow and especially later on in the week. Right now we're at 55, and notice our temperature trend through the night really not changing at all, holding steady in the mid-50s with some dampness developing. And we'll talk about that dampness, uh, if we're going to get any measurable rain, and when we do have a chance of some real rain and storms in just a bit. All right, if you're ready for it to warm up, it's your time. It's happening. Yeah, could be happening as we speak. <laughs> I mean, it's not going to cool off very much. <laughs> no, it, we you typically don't cool off much this time of year. The, this weekend was an exception, especially Saturday morning when we had a frosting of snow in parts of the hill country on the grass and elevated surfaces. That's all behind us, and we're not looking at anything nearly that cool again. I mean, look at our morning temperature trend. 56 tomorrow morning, and then by Wednesday and Thursday, our mornings will be well into the 60s then we see those morning temperatures drop off a little bit for this upcoming weekend, but nothing, nothing really significant. We're not going to get back down into the low 40s, upper 30s. All right, let's take a look at the temperatures across the state. All very similar, with the exception of El Paso at 72, but 
That's nothing for El Paso. The rest of us, 50s and some 60s. 55 officially in San Antonio. Divine and Stinson, 57. Kerrville and Comfort at 51 degrees right now. What was it? More comfort? <laughs> Isn't that what they used to call it? Camp, Camp comfort. comfort. Camp Comfort. And then just changed it to comfort. See, Justin's in our heads with those stories. Can't not think about it when you see those names. 56 in the morning tomorrow, 62 at noon, and then 70 degrees the high temperature. Fairly gray tomorrow. Drizzly, sprinkly dampness off and on. Still making it to around 70. That's 72 in Castroville, 72 in Seguin, Sabinal, 74, Utopia, 72. But those, more, those, those afternoon temperatures get back to 80 degrees Wednesday through the rest of the week and on into the weekend. So 80 degrees is looking pretty likely and it's going to be a staple high temperature as soon as Wednesday course, right after spring break for everybody, right? Low clouds are in place and we do have this high pressure system right over Memphis area. This is a surface low, not one of those upper level highs. This is at the ground. And so it's got that clockwise circulation and notice how that means wind coming off of the Gulf of Mexico. We know how that changes the feeling in our air. Dew points right now in the forties, not too bad, pleasant, fairly dry, all things considered, but that changes just gradually through the night tonight with that southeasterly wind at 5 to 15 miles per hour. These dew points rise and you'll notice that mugginess tomorrow. Dew points tomorrow afternoon into the mid 60s. So you'll feel the stickiness back in the air, but also it means those warmer mornings that we talked about as well as dampness. And here's our future cast. This is what I mean. The real insignificant but nuisance rain. I mean, we'll take every drop that we can get. Don't get me wrong and even a day of just clouds at least helps our ground from drying out a little bit more. But if we're going to have something out there and some damp roadways, you know, I just want something to show for it. Maybe a few hundredths of an inch here and there. Otherwise, just those intermittent pockets of drizzle and sprinkles coming and going throughout the day, especially the first half of the day tomorrow and then every morning the rest of this week. However, by Friday morning, we could actually have some showers and thunderstorms. So notice our forecast here tomorrow morning, even early afternoon, some of that drizzly dampness and a few sprinkles as well. Wednesday, mainly just in the morning by the afternoon, some sunshine Thursday, same thing, morning drizzle and dampness, then some afternoon sunshine, a bit breezy as well. You'll notice that wind pick up by Thursday and even on into Friday. It's just going to switch directions on Friday coming out of the west northwest, but there's a 40% chance of storms with that Pacific cold front that hits early on Friday morning. That includes Thursday night and on into Friday morning. There is the chance that we could see an area of severe weather potential. Something to keep you updated on. We'll check back, of course, for those updates. and We'll keep you posted on the latest into the weekend. Actually looking and feeling pretty good mornings. 49 degrees on Saturday morning, Sunday morning at 54 and afternoons right near 80 with the sunshine. So sweeping away the humidity for a few days as we get into the weekend. Yeah, temperatures on the way up. Thanks, Adam. The buzz up next. In the buzz today, 90 is a little bit up there to be a new dad, wouldn't you say? I would. Right? Yeah. Okay, well, don't tell that to Mr. Pickles. These are his kids. Mr. Pickles is a radiated tortoise who lives at the Houston Zoo. He is the oldest animal at the zoo. He and his mate, Mrs. Pickles, have been together since her arrival to the zoo back in 1996. And the baby reptiles are dill, gherkin, and jalapeno. I just hope it's Mr. Pete Pickles and Mrs. Paula Pickles. Of course. That's what I hope. <laughs> it's interesting looking animals though. A quick thinking worker spotted Mrs. Pickles laying the eggs as the zoo was closing. Experts snatched them up. The baby pickles are important because radiated tortoises are critically endangered. So look at those little things. Yeah, there's some power in those pickles. <laughs> All right, if you love the outdoors and you don't mind interacting with the occasional bear, then a job may be waiting for you in New Mexico. The state's Department of Game and Fish says it's looking for professional bear huggers. The post includes photos showing workers cuddling a baby bear. The agency actually looking to hire conservation officers and interactions with bears. Only one part of the job. And cuddling them until they're how big? I, I would think not you much know, bigger than this. They are looking for someone who likes to hike in strenuous conditions and has the courage to crawl into a bear den. I think that one's name's Teddy. <laughs> spring is here. Today marks the first day of spring. Days start to get longer. Temps start to get warmer. And trees and flowers start to bloom. 
Here's a brief astronomy lesson. Okay. Not a meteorological lesson. Astronomy. Gotcha. Okay. I'm making a line there. Clear distinction. On the spring equinox, the world sees roughly equal periods of day and night. Seasons arise because the Earth tilts as it revolves around the sun, bringing half the planet closer to the sun's warmth. And right now, it's the north's turn for longer, warmer days while it's getting colder south of the equator. There's your equinox history that Adam Kasky does not believe. No, it's not meteorological spring. Yeah, that's March 1st. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Let's take a quick look at Transguide here. I tend at the Y right near downtown. You can see it's all smooth out there. We've taken a look at the cameras all around town. No big issues out there on the roads. I have to take us back to Saturday morning. Ooh. All right, look at this. This was uh, Rock Springs. And here's another shot of Rock Springs. See a little minor accumulation on the grassy and elevated surfaces. Didn't last very long, but this is a Chisos Basin, so basically the Chisos Mountains in Big Bend National Park, they measured between six and eight inches of snow in the national park, especially at elevation there. Wow. Good moisture for them, too. Especially yeah, going absolutely. The yeah. They need it out there. Mm -hmm. It's melted now. <laughs> well, I still needed it at the <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'm glad he pointed out it melted.